But with a little right. trick, and the man coached me on the play. This is a famous actor. I don't remember his name. Oh, and the man helped me get the part. That's dope. But like I'm saying, look what Will did for me. Like, Will was like, you're going to get this. But that's what actors do. Or that's what good people do. Can I say that? That see something, he must have saw a desire in you. Will, he knew I was climbing the ladder of success and knew that that was going to be next. And, I mean, I remember when we did our back. seat. And, and, and you never look back. Um, At all. And you, and you stay looking beautiful. You stay on top of your game. You start gotcha. pioneering. So now you're like a real boss because you got some type of deal with Lifetime where you're putting out these <laughs> movies now. Now you really, that's why you up in the hills. You know I know. You up in the hills now. <laughs> you got that house up in that hill because you, you producing the movies now. Right. Uh, yes. And what you I'm grateful. It. No doubt. You know, I love what I do. It's always great when you can do what you love to do in different chapters. And I'm grateful to Lifetime. Lifetime was the first network that after Kill Bill gave me uh, my own show called Missing. I played uh, a detective and I filmed that up in Toronto. It was great. Then Lifetime was the first one. Then it was like, we got the boy show where I was making it rain with the boys every Wednesday, Vivica's Black Magic. <laughs> and then when that didn't work out, then it turned to movies. My wife won't turn off that channel. That lifetime is like I've seen every ex-husband kill their wife, uh, try to collect the the the, the, the insurance money. Like, yes, all that fake the death. Like that's like the, that's the advance on my children. Two thousand twenty-one or something. I mean, it's crazy. And I see you work with uh, the jail guy. What's his name? Jeremy. Oh, yes. Let's talk about that. True to the game. Let me tell you that, you know, I, I have a tendency. I didn't have some fabulous co-stars. I've been very blessed to work with the best. But can I tell you one thing that I love about Jeremy, that when he came on screen, True to the Game was his first movie. He had never acted before. He had been modeling. He was over there, you know, ripping the runway. You know, he went from Prison Bay to that bay to marrying an heiress, having a baby, to now he's an actor. And so we the first time we all saw him on screen, he just had that it factor. Like some people like those eyes, and you know he got the neck and he's tall. Like I was like, Manny, Manny Haley, who produces him. I said, sign him up for two. You got to sign him up for two because this dude is, they, before white people pluck it. You know what I mean? I'm like, they already got him with the modeling thing. But when they see no, how they much pressure... No, they got him with the girlfriend. Like, he got a rich, a billionaire girlfriend. Or the white girl bagged him early. <laughs> like, the billionaire chick bagged him early. Like, like, he secured like, the bag. He secured oh, the bag. He secured that bag. Eight okay. Seconds. I ain't mad at him about now, that. Let me ask you something. Have you ever okay. worked with opposite from a guy that was just too handsome to work with? Like, when you're looking at him, you're like, damn, this dude is... He might be too much. Uh, well, I love a challenge. You know, I want you to be fine standing next to me. Because that means I got to get my shit together and drink some water that week and work out and, and make sure my stuff is something right. No, I'm serious. I love a challenge. And I love working with beautiful people. So I'm going to tell you some of the finest actors I've ever worked with. Morse Chestnut. Mm. Let me tell you something about Morse. Morse Chestnut is the chocolate excellence. That's all I got to say. And to all the girls, kids in them was a true dream. They had to go cut several times. And they, <laughs> said, and they, said, the they said you loved that kiss from that Morris Chestnut. They, you made him a legend. <laughs> Y'all listen, you made him a legend in the kissing game, Vivica. You made him a, a legend. <laughs> well, he was good. But I always made a rule that I, I'm going to tell you, but I never mess with my co-stars. That's always a rule. Because you know why? It can literally ruin a movie set. Like, you know, I have, a friend, you know, I have a friend. She's a super duper duper star, right? I can't say too much, right? But I okay. mean, a big boy, like a big one. And she, she acts. And she told me she did like a fake sex scene with a dude. Um, and she said the dude's thing was all hard and rubbing on her. And, 
And she was like, yo, she, she felt like it was a violation. And she, she stopped the dude and was like, yo, my man, why you rubbing your thing up on me? And, <laughs> I mean, is that a normal thing that happens in sex scenes? You're killing me. You're I'm killing me. the truth. <laughs> well, but see, look, that's why you got to have boundaries. Do you know what I mean? Like, you got to have boundaries. I'm going to tell all other, other young actors, like, it's your job. You're supposed to get this thing hard. You are. However, just put a pillow right between your region. Put the pillow between the theory. Right. So, you know what I mean? So, then that way, if it happens, he, it's like a dog coming on the leg, and you, you know, you protect it. Yeah, that's smart. Like she said, right. that. So, she said, Mr. Right. will have that same rubbing <laughs> on her arm. She, she was out in New Orleans. She was like, yo, listen, man. This guy rubbing this shit. I had to stop him. Like, yo, my man, you trying to get off on me? Like, acting. Okay. Like, like, you have to make sure, like, when you do kissing scenes, whether or not you grant a person permission to put their tongue in your mouth. Like, I discussed that. That's, that's just communication. Because not everybody do you feel, because when you do the tongue in the mouth, to me, it's very intimate. You know what I mean? Because most of the time, it's the kind of air kiss. Well, well, it's choreographed. You know what I mean? But if it's somebody that, like, you want it to look like boom, boom, fire, then you got to have that talk. And then make sure somebody got fresh breath. Oh, Don't man, they ain't got fresh you know breath, I mean? it's over. Right. Okay, it's a must. Now you gotta have a dude with, with fucking Tic Tacs on the side. <laughs> like, Yo, stink breath is the worst shit in the universe. It is. It is. I agree. If you come over here with some drag, you know, burning off your eyelashes and shit, you like, I can't Damn, do that. And it, it'll turn the most beautiful person I did. Oh, I know. I've been there. You know, you know we've I been did, out of You know, I did like a fake. I thought I was gonna get murdered. I shot a video, I think last week, is, I mean, last year, it's called Deep, and I had my first fake, like, uh, sex scene, a love scene. Yeah, Urban and? shot the video, and I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous. I didn't think yeah. I would be nervous, but I was nervous. Cameras, I didn't want to do too much. <laughs> like, I didn't want the girl to think I was a scumbag slash. You didn't want it to be like, I didn't hey. want to get murdered when I got home and that video <laughs> came out. I mean, it was, it, it, it was, it was, uh, it, 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 you know, I, it was nice. It was regular. I couldn't, I didn't go there, you know. Okay, good. Good. But did you and her talk about the love scene, like, where it's a kind of choreograph? It's about that life. She was like, oh. she ain't never say one time, you can't touch me, you can't this, you can't this. You know, she was all big job. So, but I mean, respectfully, respectfully. But she, she never said none of that. But me, wow. I was just like, you know, it, it's, it's weird because I feel like, you know, you know, I got a family, I walk in, you know, <laughs> I'm just like, yo, <laughs> it might be too much. And Irv told me, he would not shoot the video if I didn't do the scene. Damn. He called okay, but can I say this? That that cut is going to make the video because there's nothing worse than somebody to put you through a love scene and then it don't make the cut. Because I've done that before in movies too where you thought you did something that was fly and they were like, oh, we ran out of time. So, you know, we had to cut that. So oh, you yeah, better make sure that they, makes they, it. No, nah, it's in the video. The video been out for a year, but okay. I've been in plenty. I've been in plenty, but even like let's say night school, right? When I had the opportunity to do night school, and and it was Kevin Hart, it was Tiffany Haddish, bro. I learned so much being in that movie. Mm. They was going at it, like who's the king of comedy? Oh like, yeah, like, and then the 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 finished product was dope. But there were so many takes that were like, I guess they wanted to make it like PG-13. But right. if they would have did the R version, the rated R, <laughs> that shit would have been a classic for the rest of life. And I had the opportunity to sit there and I was like, wow, you could do that? You could improvise like that? Wow, I, I was just learning. Soaking yeah. it up. Like, uh, who, are, who are actors you worked with that you soaked it up? And he was like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. Oh, that's dope. Woo. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, when I did the show, 
um, with Larry David. What was that show? Oh, shoot, Ooh. did everybody love it? Curb Your Enthusiasm? Curb Your Enthusiasm, thank you. Okay, that's all improv. And, you know, their style of, of 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 comedy is different than black people's style. You know, black people, we just go murder each other with the jokes. Um, Curb Enthusiasm was, uh, it was uh, creative. And he always used to tell me, don't try to be funny. Don't try to be funny. And I would be like, oh, 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 okay, but we are doing a comedy, right? So I learned to just be queen of reactions. Yeah, his thing, and that his thing is dry comedy. Yes, exactly. No, I, exactly. Love, I love Kirby Enthusiasm. His thing yeah. is, is dry comedy. It's like, you'll get it later. Yes, right. It, it I, just, it's just different. I'll tell you some funny thing uh, happened to me. Uh, that happens in Curb Your Enthusiasm all the time. And I should have known better. <laughs> so I'm going up to have a meeting with some executive, like a boss, right? Some, okay. some, some lady I never met her before. So I'm on the elevator with my mans. And they're like, yeah, what floor? I'm like 14. And, then, and, and I'm like, man, I hope this bitch, you know, you know, yeah, I'm on the elevator. I'm like, I hope this bitch, man, because, you know, I don't really give a fuck, man. I'm coming to see this bitch today. So I'm talking like, who is on the elevator? Problem is, there's a female on that elevator, right? She gets out on the same floor as us. Oh, shit. And when I walk in the office, it's the girl that I'm going God. to meet. Well, woman who's an executive. And the first thing she did when she said that, that was my curvy enthusiasm moment. She was like, oh, I guess I'm the bitch that you hold. Um, oh. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry, that's how the guys kick in. Yo, I learned from that point on, I don't give a fuck who's on that elevator. I'm like this. Right, how you doing? Right. And that happened right. a lot with, with Larry David. That happened a lot to Larry David. Um, yeah. Curvy enthusiasm. And um, yeah. and so what do you, what do you, what do you want to do, Vivica? Because I see you chasing this dream, I see you chasing this legacy. Oh. What, what, what what do you want it to all where to end up? You, you you found a way to maintain being beauty all these years. You found a way way to be relevant. What do you want to do? What what, what do you want it to end up when we look back at Vivica Fox ten years from now? And what what are you trying to do? For me, I, I just want to leave work that I, that you guys can be proud of. That whenever you know that it is a Vivica Fox production, that it will be classy. That you'll be like, this is my girl. I know it's going to be good. I know the actors are going to look good. I know the portrayals of the characters are, are going to be good because I care about what I do. I do my best not to put out junk. And... Um, I just want I just want to have a, a legacy that you know y'all know like Cicely Tyson said before she passed away that y'all know I did my best. So I'm about to head to DC uh, at the end of the month for a new chapter. I'm about to become a director. Are oh, you going to direct now? Yes. Tell us about that. What's this movie about? Wow, it's going to be on BT. Um, I can't give you too many details because I I don't want to kill them. But yeah, it will be my directorial debut. Um, I'd love to come back once it comes out because uh, every year BET gives four uh, women a chance to do uh, directorial debuts. And it's part of their Hurt campaign where they deal with things that affect the uh, women, especially the African-American community, things that we don't like to talk about. Domestic violence, breast cancer awareness, mental illness, homelessness, you know, that we just have to learn that we, too, go through stories mm -hmm. that, you know, we have been the, 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 the backbone of our families for a long time. And it's OK to talk. It's OK to say I need help. It's OK to say that right now I'm not good. And so I'm glad that a person, especially I'm going to tell you, Joe, something about my career that what I'm happy that right now is that I'm finally happy in my 50s in the skin I'm in. I used to always think that I had to be fucking perfect. I did. And so I would, was Very afraid important. to tell you I feel the same way. Word. No, yeah, I, I was afraid to tell you. I feel like yep. y'all ain't got to be young. You know what I tell them? I tell them this, right? And um, I, I'm a, let, me, let me talk about what I was going to say first. One thing I've studied in women uh, is that 
Women are the backbones of the family. Whether they have a nine to five or they, they're housewives or they raising kids, they always put their family before them. Yes. And before their needs and before their thoughts and what they need, it's always them. Um, it's always the family. If I caught COVID, God forbid, my wife mm. worry about making sure that I'm safe. Yes. She even worry about her catching COVID. Mm. You know, and, and it's something that, you know, I've noticed that women need to just think about themselves sometimes, too. Because right. they can put everybody before themselves. Yes. And, and, well, it's and our nature. Huh? It's our nature. No, it is. And, yeah. Um, so I tell them like this, Vivica, for people like me and you, right? They say, Joe, uh, you're putting out this music and, you know, you know, with everything, right? I think little less when you can help me with it because it's obviously something because you maintain how beautiful you are. You make sure yes. you don't get out of weight. You make sure you straight. Yeah. So I'm sure there's a form of ageism in yes. television and movies. Yes. And in, in music, it's super ageism. So it's like, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it's hip hop. It's for the young. If you're an OG or icon, time to go hit the old school at noon tour. We're not trying to hear you on prime time. No. I'm telling you, the truth, so, I know you are. So and you think everybody would go to Vegas, right? Everybody yeah, yeah, would go, like to go to Vegas or something. Right. So I turn up, which I don't mind getting that check in Vegas. But hold up. Oh, yes, I got it. No, I don't mind that. Selena Trump, J Lo check. Yes. Jerry yes. Jackson check. Yes. I don't mind that. Vegas, well, it's changed. I'm here. You know. I know that's right. With host Vivica Fox. So I go like this. <laughs> Vivica, I go like this. I said. I tell them, they ask me, yo, Joe, I said, listen, man, I'm the Big Mac. And they said, well, what, what do you mean? I said, I'm the Big Mac. I said, if you want comfort food, you go to McDonald's and you go get yourself a Big Mac <laughs> with extra sauce, and it always yeah. tastes the same. And when you get the Big Mac, you don't ask if it was born in the 70s, 80s, or 90s. You go get the Big Mac. And so I said, when it comes to me, when I make music, the young kids, the older, who cares? When they hear my voice on the radio, they say, we've been hearing this voice for 20 years. This yes. is Big Mac. Yeah. The Big Mac. A classic. And so I try to tell them, don't try to put a time on greatness. Yes. Don't try to bottle up greatness to say you had your run. Who is to determine I've had my run? Who is to say I am not Dionne Warwick who started in the late 40s? Who is to say I am not Tina Turner who had her yes. first hit at 48? Or Carlos Santana who had yeah. his biggest hit at 50? I'm like, yes. Yo, don't, don't try to stop greatness. Even though, I'm not going to lie, the record is really blowing up. But I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to lay the groundwork for the little Uzi Burks the little yachties, the, the, all the guys coming after me, so that when they become 40 years old, they can say, and when they try to stop them, they be like, yo, Fat Joe put out that Sunshine 221, and yes. it was popping. So you can't tell me or put a time on my greatness. And right. And you on the same tip with the acting and not producing yes. and directing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and, and this is what you try to explain to the young generation. Because, you know, they live in a generation that they swipe everything so quick. Or let me put something out on YouTube. Or let me do the twerking video and see how many likes I can get. Or do something drastic to get likes. Uh, a career lasts, has longevity. A career isn't built overnight. It happens through many different chapters. And I'm just so blessed that I got good people around me that tell me when I'm messing up, when I'm team too much, or a, a team that says, hey, let's do uh, movies now. Let's have you produce. Let's have you be an author. Let's have you do a hair collection. Let's have you do a podcast. I have people surrounded 
uh, a team surrounded by me that are looking at the longevity of the career, not just a moment. You know, it's crazy. I had uh, Cheryl Coco from SWV last night on I here. And she's, she, you know, I grew up in the same projects as her, the same block. What? Yeah, so it was like, I, you know, I hope I did my job well because I was wrapped up in so much. Because she was the first one to blow out my projects. On wow. Another level. So it was like overnight, she was a superstar when you see her. And so it took me years and years and years till I ran into her in the airport. And I'm like, I'm wondering if Cheryl sees what I'm doing. Like, if mm. she knows what I'm so last night we got together and and she gave me her top five greatest singers and one of them was Miss Patty LaBelle. Yes. And I told her, I not only love Patty for her music, yes. I love Patty because she's still making $40 million a year in 2021 off her pies. Right. I was gonna say I love Patty Pies. So no, I, you know, no, let's support that. It, it, it inspires me. Yes. Right? I, I look, I always look through a lens of inspiration, never mm. jealousy. Exactly. So if somebody I look up to it makes it as an entrepreneur, philanthropist, whatever, I say, wow, we can do that. Yes. And so um the things, the moves you're making now with the directing, with the producing, with the you pioneering that for the ladies. I'm sure we got other ones. Absolutely. Like Eva. But Duvet, Orlando yes. Wade, and but you know you try you try to get your thing in too. Absolutely. Listen, as I said, <clears throat> I want to have a career that when I look back out, I was like, wow, we did that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I would tell you when I learned my hustle mentality was when I kind of started hanging around people in the music game, Puffy's, J Lo, Beyonce. Paying attention to them being able to do um, music, movies, colognes, clothing, not just going after one source of income. Never limit yourself, you know? So like me, when I did my hair collection, which now I'm about to celebrate 10 years of being in the Biblical Fox hair collection, I got teased. They said, oh my God, when the checks stopped coming in, now she's selling wigs not knowing that the hair collection is a billion dollar a year franchise. So I was like, wow. And as much money as I spent on wigs and weaves, I was like, yo, check it out. Let me get back some of that pot. Some that's of that right. pot. You that's know what right. I'm saying? And that, that's, I work three days where I go do the photo shoot and I promote it all year. It's like, and then the brand of Vivica Fox keeps growing. That then led me to be able to say, hey, when I do my movies, if y'all can't afford the budget for the clothes, for us to look good, I'll chip in on the wardrobe. You gotta, you gotta spend money to make money. That, that's the old saying from back in the day. You already know that. And you gotta not be afraid to invest in you. I mean, you, you, you only saying what I say every night to people. <laughs> You know, I'm independent. I paid for my videos. I paid for my radio promotion. I paid for wow. the make it. I paid for everything. I've been like this for like 16 years. And mm. even at a time when I wasn't doing as good as I am, I would go overseas and do a tour yes. for two months, come mm -hmm. back with the money I got, and invest yes. it in my music and my videos to make more. And some wow. people don't realize you have to invest in yourself. Absolutely. Nothing's free. Nobody's going to come hand you nothing. You got to invest in yourself, in your brand. I mean... And can I say this too, Joe? Especially once you get older. Because the studios and everybody's like, oh, well, you know, uh, your draw may not be what it used to be. Like, they try to tell you, like, women my age, oh, normally we would be put out to pasture. You have nothing more to offer. You can't get it, and, and don't nobody want to give it to you. Psych! Because right now you see these baby boomers finer than ever, from Jennifer Lopez to Jada to Latifa to Vivica to Tony Braxton. Did you see Tony Braxton walking the other day in the drawers and the shiny blonde hair? Yeah, I was I like, Tony, I see Tony Braxton I, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big Tony Braxton fan, so I know all about right. her song with her. I mean, I'm big on Tony Braxton. Right. Like, like so I love, you're seeing these Tony, Tony different. Yeah, okay, well, come on back. Come on no, back, because no, no, you're about no, no, to leave us. Tony you're about different. to leave us for just a second. <laughs> no, no, Tony different, man. I'm telling you, she's uh, she's aged super gracefully. 
Yes, I know. I, I love Tony. You know, Tony, Tony was the first one that showed up and was like, I'm just going to have a strap here and then over here. You know, I'm going to have a leg showing. I'm going to have a leg showing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to come out feeling good about myself. Yes. And then he sang too. And was beautiful. Of course. You know? So, but I was going to say, think about for us. So we're getting older. Like, that now we're able to invest in our own careers and then have resurgence. Everybody's like, yo, I'm feeling you. Look at what Beyonce did. Beyonce, they didn't want to give her the kind of album she wanted. So what did she do? She said, I'm going to go make my own album, make 14 of my own videos, and I'm going to drop it at my own time. You're not creatively going to tell me where I'm at. That's I'm going to show you where I'm at. No, that's a fact. You know, I had dinner one time, only one time, and I, and I don't want to name drop, right? But I had dinner only one time uh, with Mickey Rock, right? Oh, yes. So okay. It, it was me, a bunch of Italians, and Mickey <laughs> Rock in Miami. No, I'm telling you, this was some gangster shit, right? But he was there. He knew one of the Italian guys. And, and he was talking. And, and Mickey Rock, remember, he was so handsome when he was young and all that. Yeah. And then, and then he starts saying that he dissed certain people, so they blackballed him from the industry at the time. Okay. And then, and then so I guess he grew up as a person, mm. made amends, made good for what he did. And the next thing, five, ten years later, I see him starring in like Iron Man or some shit yes. like that. And then right. he did the movie The Wrestler. But he humbled himself yes. and he made good with whatever he did. And so um, a lot of times you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to relationship out. Yes. And I remember having a dinner with him and I'm talking about some real guys. And he was saying, I'm going to tell you, he said he disliked the, 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 the LGBT community, he said. He, oh. he, he straight up said it. Right? And he said he was wrong. In front yes. of like 10 macho guys at a table, he was like, I was wrong. I should have never did that. And right. you know, they, they ain't liking that. And that, and that's why my career went down for Yeah, me. oh, they can but kill you. Oh my God. Trust me. I went on the show when I had Vivica's Black Magic and they asked me what type of show was. And I just wanted to say the show is called The Ultimate Ladies Night Out. And somebody was like, oh, so it's not this, this, that, and the third? But Joe, let me tell you something. That day, that community blew up my phone. I remember I was headed to the spa to go get a massage because I had been working so much. I stopped, parked in the parking lot at the spa, and I answered every single one of them. I was like, that was not my intention. I apologize. Because, you know, you have to own up to, you know, we all make mistakes. Everybody make a mistake. You understand what I'm saying? But a person that's a person that's a quality person will say, my bad, that's not what I meant. Especially you in this industry, you've been having stylists and hairstylists. Yes. And you've been dealing uh, with people for years. And, years. And, and they love you. And if you and if they take it the wrong, if it's 2021, they'll clickbait you like a motherfucker real quick. Like okay. Like Right. And, then the people, and it's that one clip. The people you know that all your family members and all your friends, it's unfair to them. You know, because they'll be like, damn, man, this is my, why, why would he say that? Or why would Word. he say that? And so right. it's, very, it's very important uh, to be careful of everybody else's feelings. That's yes, you know, and, and just, you know what? I mean, we live in a very hypersensitive time right now. Well, like you said, everybody's trying to get that clickbait. So, you know, I think it's unfortunate, especially for us as celebrities, that sometimes somebody will get you on a show and they're trying to click you into that. And I'm going to tell you something. It made me for years be very guarded. Mm -hmm. I used to not like to do radio. I used to not like to do interviews because I was like, y'all, y'all forgetting I can act. Y'all so concerned about my damn social life that y'all forget my talent. Y'all forget how y'all got to know me because y'all caught up and caught up in that so for the longest time that's why when i went and did theater i had to reestablish myself as an actor i took it you know that they was more concerned about my social life than my my craft so i said you know what i'm gonna do 
I'm going to go and reinvent myself. So I went and I did the theater and I did some plays where my character's face got cracked. I was ugly on stage, had a wig on backwards, no makeup. And everybody's like, oh my God, I forgot how good of an actress she was. So wow. then I slowly got to rebuild the brand. Um, I always had my hairline that, that never went away. But then I was able to start getting movie roles again, start getting television shows again. Then came Empire. Now, you know, then came my my talk show. Then came this. Now came that. Now everybody's like, damn, you everywhere now. But I had to have the courage to look at myself in the mirror and say, Delica, what are you doing that people are looking at you sideways? What, what did you contribute to that? So let's get back. Let's do the work. And you're going to have to reestablish the brand. And I, I, that's why I'm here now. It was a hell of a journey. I go lie. There were some days that I was clapping back and, and being team too much. And now, now it's like, okay, she's good. Now, I've been places, Vivica, right? I went, uh, you know, I went from having the number one song in America to getting into this tax case where I went to jail mm. for taxes, even though I'm telling you, I did everything in the world, every crime you could think of. I wasn't guilty of this, but I went to jail for it. I had to pay all this money back. Um, and I remember I was just doing shows, and there's no disrespect because overseas, they love hip hop so much, but I was over there on tour for like, I don't even know how to explain it to you. It might've been eight months. I was just town Damn. to town, Yugoslavia, this, Bummy hotels, regular, no tall bus, right. regular van, trying to get my money back up. Right. I remember one time, I was sitting in the van, and this dude was driving us. And he said, so I did, I did that was frustrating, right? Because I right. come from doing summer jams and stadiums and flying yes. private planes to yes. back to the grind. My, right. My family ain't understand because I kept them living the way they live and I kept paying the bills. White people Work. still getting Birkins, sending my son <laughs> to college. But I was in West Bubba fuck. <laughs> but Work. I found a guy who was driving me around. I came out of a show and everybody, you know, in Europe, they all smoke cigarettes. So right. I like a, I don't smoke. And I smelled like a giant cigarette yeah. sitting down and I was frustrated. And I was like, yo, man. I'm getting tired of doing these shits, right? Word. Guy in the van who was driving me around was like, yo, you better get used to it, man. This this, this your career. <gasps> man, I remember I looked at this dude, man. Right? I looked at this dude. I was like, this my career. I remember the shit was ricocheting off my, my head. I was like, this my career. I was like, oh, this motherfucker think. I ain't got another all the way up in me. This motherfucker think I know I that's right. He, don't, he think I ain't coming back like I'm coming Word. back. So I listened to him. I was like, all right, my brother. I said, do me a favor. I told my man, Sia, who I did all the tours with. I said, you'll see him. Make sure this guy don't work with me no more, man. Get him out of here. I know that's right. He don't believe in me. Get him out of here. Get me somebody else. The next day, I had somebody else. But that always stood in my head Yeah. Um, that somebody would say that to you, and they count you out. Yes. And the point is, you got to believe in yourself and never count yourself mm -hmm. out. Period. That's it. Yes. Yes, I'm telling you. And can I tell you, that takes it back to the beginning of our conversation when you said for women, um, that women have a tendency sometimes that they take care of everybody else, that they forget to take care of themselves. I went through that too. That was another re that I said, I got to I gotta have seasons of shit. All of you negative motherfuckers, Y'all got to go. All of y'all taking y'all off of my nipples right now. Because mm. y'all dragging my nipples down and I'm not doing it no more. So in the last, I, I, for real. So when you see me now looking the way I do, it was because I said, like I said, I looked in the mirror meeting. How you looking? How you living? You looking sad. You depressed. You frowning. Come on. Snap out of it. That ain't you, B. But I had to do that. Mm. And so those doubters, those people, because misery loves company. Mm. Like that dude you trying to tell you your career, this is where you at in this shitty old right now, this is you. You was like, wow, no, 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 no. But it stuck. Some people would have took that and, and stayed there. So mm. you know, you know, 
it, it takes a strong person to believe in themselves. And so that's why we're here now to pass on the Generation Next. Like, look, you might be having people throwing money at you. You're doing stadiums. You're doing, especially COVID, crippled everybody. What you going to do this next? What you got next? Because there's going to come a time that you're going to get older. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is going to be new. Somebody else going to be smarter, prettier, whatever, handsomer, better body. It just happens. But what you got next? And I'm never a hater. I'm a congratulator. So if somebody come new, I don't try to be for nobody. That's in there. You know what I try to do? I try to make money with you. Yeah. Okay. I embrace them. I embrace them. And, and, and people wonder why the young rappers and the OGs really don't have a better relationship. It's because we got to learn to embrace the youth. We got to learn yeah. to salute them. And be happy that they're not out sticking up our mothers at the gas station. Woo! You know. Okay. And and so and so when I you know I can I like you said I congratulate them. Yes. I don't I don't disrespect them. I y'all I love you. It might be a different style of music. This you see, this is something y'all all gonna learn from right now, right? So now, if I take the hottest young rapper right now, mm -hmm. and he could be making music. Say we don't even like it, but he, whatever. And I turn the volume down, and I look at him. His energy is just like mine when I first came in the game. Wow. He has a story to tell. He want to get his mother out the projects. Mm. He wants to be successful. So energy is energy. Agree. No matter what. So if you look at Agreed. it, I see the same thing I saw in my eyes when I dropped my first video. Not listening to the music. So you mm. got to understand, uh, it's our job to be transparent and yes. help them along the way and let them know we made those mistakes. Don't do that one. That's not yeah. going to help you. And try to open you, doors for them. And you know, you get some that listen. You do. And you're going to get some that don't. But the one thing, like, you know, everybody, I sit in, in the comment section right now, and everybody's commending you for talking to uh, Lil Uzi. Uh, you uh, yeah, know. That's my guy. That's my guy. Yeah, you know, the little dude that put, yeah. what is, was at 24 hey, million. I look, at I look at it different, though, Vivica. I, we come from kings and queens from Egypt. They okay. They didn't have diamonds on their shit. <laughs> and, yo, I look at it different. And let me tell you something. It takes one crazy motherfucker to know another crazy one. So when he up there, he like, yeah, you know my 24 months. I said, I understand it. He said, that's because you crazy, Joe, because I'm crazy. So you're crazy, too. I said, yo, we live once. Right. Nobody. Listen to me, Vivica. Nobody has been able to take the U-Haul truck with him when okay. they pass on. That's right. And so whatever makes you happy, as long as it's legal, as long as you're not hurting nobody, yes. what the fuck I care? He can throw a $34 million. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Right. It, 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 what, is it real, though? That's all of I want to know. it's real. Okay. Now, question number two. Mm -hmm. Does this brother who's now advertised that he's got $24 million implanted in his head, right, have security. Oh, you need extra security. Yeah, that's okay. Right. I mean, let's just keep that real. Let's just keep oh, that yeah. real. Yeah, you know, yeah. you got to watch how much you advertise what you got. Oh, that's a fact. Okay. No, no, no. That's a fact. Let me leave you with this, right? Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about something that got nothing to do with nothing. Oh. Right? But it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got nothing. To, but it's very important, right? So something bothered me. Right, I live in Miami. I've been watching the news for like a week. This young lady, she's 21. She's missing. She's autistic and she loves bird watching. And they looking for her. the cops, okay. everybody, the family's on the news all day. It touched me in a different way, right, watching this. And I hope she's safe. I hope they find her. But I say to myself, does all women have a fear of being abducted? Oh. And, and, and I'll ask you that because you're a real one. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, what, like, um, 
does all women feel like you're walking down the street by yourself, certain time somebody might come and snatch you? Have, have you ever felt like that? I, you know, I'm, I'm always one. I've always got my head on a, on a, on it was on a shovel, on a swivel, or whatever that is, a swivel. Yeah. yeah, I'm always watching my surroundings. Just because I left home when I was 17 years old in search of a dream that I've been able to live out beyond my wildest expectations. I've traveled all over the world, so my mom always told me, "Watch where you at. Watch who's around you. Watch what you're doing." Um, and that's something that we've got to teach these young ladies, you know, out here that uh, sex trafficking, uh, abduction. Uh, uh, people be getting kidnapped and be getting put into, uh, you know, unhealthy situations or, you know, like the one girl was, you know, down in the basement, the guy had her and made kids with her. What about the three girls that got abducted in Cleveland? Like, yeah. it's very real. So I'm glad that um, you brought that up because I, it's why I'm involved in politics. And that would surprise a lot of people about me. I care about my community and Generation Next and especially female experiences. Uh, be careful. Watch what you're going. Watch who you're messing with. Watch where you're around. Always watch your surroundings. You know, I tell people that if you're somewhere and you see a truck that's got the blacked out, you know, windows and this, that, and the third, or you just feel a vibe. Mm -hmm. If you feel a vibe. Somebody over your shoulder, somebody, you know, because I see things where women sometimes they shopping and they putting a baby in the car or they putting the gr uh, groceries in the car. He's in the third and they not watching somebody watching them. So it's just, you know, I grew up two blocks from the projects. So my mama taught me I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Always watch your surroundings and especially for females. You know, just be careful. You know, here I am. I live in a beautiful private neighborhood and I still watch my surroundings. You know, it's crazy because me, I've always been like, I watch my surroundings, but I guess I feel like I'm tough. So I don't worry <laughs> so much as for that. But it was something that made me think about that today. I was like, do women always have this fear? Because look, like, I mean, that, the girl, we hope we find her, but she wasn't asking for nobody to abduct her or mm. take her. Or that's the last thing somebody would be thinking that they're gonna come and grab you. And Word. you know, we'll move on positive and God bless her and I hope they find her. Prayers up. Prayers up for real. This this is this, I mean they're all sad, but this is this this is a sad one, right? Mm -hmm. Um uh your six your five favorite female actresses. Of all time. My five, and of all done. time. Of okay. All time. Of all time. Cicely Tyson. Diane Carroll. Mm. Angela Bassett. Mm. Regina King. Mm. Yeah, she made that. And I got to think of a young one. Kiki Palmer. Kiki Palmer. Kiki Palmer can act. Right. I'm going to tell don't, you, they're, don't all get that they're all phenomenal. Yes. I love the role that Kiki played. She was the lesbian girl in the Bronx. You seen that movie? No, what's the name of oh, it? Oh, no, that was it. Like, you know, you always oh. have a movie that somebody breaks out like, oh, Word. shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, played, she played like she was from the Bronx. She was in the strip club, stuff, a uh, lesbian. <laughs> she played that shit so crazy. Like, <laughs> hey, can I tell you before? Before I go, um, I have a new show that's premiering tonight um, wow. where we let um, African, uh, African American filmmakers have a, have a platform to showcase their uh, films. And it's on Fox Soul, my show that I do Cocktails with Queens. So a little bit later tonight, y'all, um, 10 o'clock, East Coast, 7 o'clock, please watch The Screening Room. I am giving African American filmmakers a platform to showcase their films. Where could they, where, where could they see that at? They can see that on Fox Soul YouTube channel. Yeah, and they say the movie Kiki did is called A Pimp. But let me tell you, I'm going to tell you something, Vivica. The lady that really, 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 really stands out to me is Viola De uh, uh, Woo! De oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, dang. No, 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 Oh, wow. I didn't want to do that. I mean, hey, I, come gave on. My, I gave him my one. Oh, <laughs> shit, that's hard as hell. Um, 
Viola Davis is 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 one. Yes. Um, man, it's so many, it's so many. That's uh, hard. I, I wasn't ready for that. Box so much your mouth. Huh? <laughs> Vivica Fox is always in there. Oh, <laughs> Vivica Fox is always in there. Um. Ruby it's Davis. So, it's, 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 it's so many. I can't even. And and my thing is so. Uh, what's what's home girl? She did uh, the white the the white the white girl. She did uh, she just had that series where her husband was her husband killed his his mistress. Homeland. Nah, what's her name, man? She's she's amazing. Um, she's amazing. When homeboy killed his his, his side chick because she was gonna tell his wife. Um, mm. Man, I love Taraji as well. Yes, I love Taraji as well. Um, Nicole Kidman. Yes, Nicole Kidman. Yes, and I also she's like, good. Uh, Charlize Theron. Shall yeah, Charlize. Was it Charlize? Charlize. Charlize, Charlize, Charlize Theron. She's from South Africa. Charlize. Yes, she's you good. She played that role. Monster. Monster. You see this? Wow. She, she, she won an Oscar. She won an Oscar for that. Yes, she did. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, she won an Oscar for Monster. Nailed it. But you know, that's what you want. Those are the kind of roles that you want as actresses. You know, you didn't even see her. She got the, the prosthetics with the mouth. She looked ugly as hell. You know what I'm saying? Can I tell you, for an attractive actress, that's the only time that they take you seriously as an actress. You when you get up. You said you did you did uh the stage. Yes, the stage you play. Did Broadway. And yeah. you, you was ugly on purpose. Yes, you have to. That's the only way to take you seriously because everybody thinks when you're attractive that everything is just roses and easy for you. And yeah, so next, oh, next you know. movie, I got to wear a mask because I'm too fucking <laughs> handsome for this shit. Man. This is why they ain't been giving me my props. This is why they ain't been giving it to me, Vivica. Vivica, we love you. Them to give you a, I don't want them to give you a love scene so you're uncomfortable. How about that? Listen, or like oh, you do with your wife. Man, I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> We love you, Vivica. I thank you for coming on here. We appreciate everything you have done. We mm -hmm. watching. We supporting. Keep doing it. Keep rising to the top. No doubt. Much love right back at you and your family. You know, keep making it do what it do, brother. Until next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bro. Bye. -bye. All right, bro. Bye.